Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a simple activity to investigate the concept of tilting and stability. If you'd like to try this at home, it's really easy. All you need to do is get a large empty water bottle, just like this. Now, why do we want to use a large empty water bottle? Because in this case, we can fill this up with water, which effectively changes the mass of the bottle without changing its base area or the volume of the overall bottle. All we're doing is just going to change the mass and see how that affects the way this bottle's stability is and how it tilts. Now, if you'd like, you can also get a piece of cardboard on which you can stand the bottle so that you can raise the cardboard and see how far you can tilt the bottle before it topples over. In this case, try not to place the bottle too far up because then it won't really be a good reading to see how far it needs to tilt. So place the bottle as close as possible to the bottom of the cardboard so that it's easier to see when it will topple over. Now, even without the cardboard, you can probably still do the activity. It's just that it's going to be a little bit awkward because you're going to have to try to tilt the bottle just to see when it will topple. At least with the cardboard, you get a better sense of how high you're raising it before it topples over. So what we're going to do is we're going to try this activity with different volumes of water or rather different masses of water. So we'll start first with no water and then a quarter full of water, half full and then completely full. Now before you start the activity, try and predict if which volume do you think that the bottle will topple over most easily? It's empty, a quarter, half, or completely full of water. Try the activity out and see if your predictions are correct. So, starting first with the empty water bottle, place it at the bottom so that the edge of the bottle lines up with the edge of the cardboard. And let's see. So, we don't have to raise it very high before it topples over. All right, so now I filled the bottle up with a quarter full of water. We're going to repeat the experiment by placing the bottle at the edge of the cardboard and we're going to raise the cardboard again. And you can see that this time we've raised the cardboard quite high before it finally topples over. Now let's try with half full. So now I filled half the bottle with water and let's try this activity again. So, placing it at the bottom of the cardboard, I'm going to raise the cardboard. And you can see that it topples over fairly quicker than when it was a quarter full. Hmm. Now let's try if it's completely full. Now we've got a completely full bottle of water. We'll try this activity again. And you can see how quickly the bottle topples over. So now that you've observed the activity, try it for yourself. And also check, hmm, did what happened really match your predictions? And try to figure out why. So why do the bottles topple at those angles that we've seen? A lot of students always find that their predictions are not quite correct. Many students tell me that they thought that the full bottle would topple less easily compared to all the others, but to their surprise, it topples just as easily as the empty bottle. In fact, the full bottle and empty bottle topple when raised to the same angle. So why is this? So in this segment of the video, I'll explain why in terms of the stability of the bottles. So in this diagram, this rectangle represents the empty water bottle. As you should know by now, the center of mass, also known as the center of gravity, is the point where all the weight of the object seem to act upon. If the object was uniformly distributed in terms of its mass, the center of mass or center of gravity would be in the center of the entire object, whether 2D or 3D. So as you can see, this bottle is empty. So the only mass or weight of this bottle come from the material of the bottle itself. So kind of uniformly distributed. That's why the center of mass or center of gravity of this empty water bottle is in the center of the object. So it's 3D in the center center. 
Now the term center of mass and center of gravity are interchangeable. So from this point forth, I'll just use the term center of mass, but bear in mind that center of gravity just mean the same thing. So this is the center of mass. And as we know, when placed in a gravitational field, there will always be weight. So obviously we're on Earth and gravity is pulling downwards. So this arrow represents the weight line. So the weight of the empty water bottle is acting from its center of mass. So again, this is the center of mass. This arrow represents the weight of this water bottle. So when we talk about toppling and stability, an object will topple over when its line of weight is outside the base area. So this is the line of weight. This is the base on which the bottle is sitting on. As long as this line of weight is within this base, it will not topple over. So if you remember what we've done in the experiment, the base is sitting on a piece of cardboard and this piece of cardboard is providing support. So even if we were to tilt this water bottle, for example, like this. Now, if this base is being supported by the cardboard, you'll find that as long as this line of weight is within that base area, it's still pretty supported. It's not going to topple over. So as long as this line of weight is within this base area. Now, if we keep tilting, let's say we tilt all the way until it gets to this point, provided that the line of weight is exactly at this point, somehow this bottle could still balance on this single point like this. So this is still a center of mass and this is the line of weight. But the moment we tilt it so that the line of weight goes outside the base area, what happens is now that the weight will pull the object so it will fall down or topple over. So there's no more support provided by the base. And in fact, this creates a little bit of a moment where this point is not a pivot point. The weight is the force that will cause the object to rotate and topple over. So based on this understanding, you should be able to see that this is the maximum angle at which the object can be tilted without toppling over. Now, how does filling the water change the angle at which the bottle can topple over? Let's take a look at this example. So now we filled this water bottle with a quarter full of water. By adding water, we've obviously changed the mass and weight of the entire system. That means now the mass has increased. But you can see that the mass of water is more at the bottom of the bottle. That means that the mass and weight is no longer uniformly distributed throughout the bottle. So the center of mass is no longer at the center of the bottle like this. So it's not the same as an empty water bottle. Because there's more water at the bottom, where there's more mass, that means that the center of mass should be lower, more towards the center of where this water is. So I'm just going to change this arrow to show. So we're going to change the arrow to help us visualize this. So it's more towards the center of the region of water like this. So the center of mass is much, much lower compared to the empty water bottle just now. How does the change of the center of mass change the angle at which the bottle can topple? So let's take a look now. So if we were to rotate the bottle, Now, as we rotate the bottle, the center of mass is also going to change. So the arrow is going to change to the new position of the center of mass because as we tilt the bottle, the center of mass also shifts. So if we keep tilting the bottle. Again, I'm just going to shift the arrow. You'll find that because the center of mass is now so low, we can actually tilt this bottle to quite a large angle before it will topple. So let's say this is where the center of mass is. And as you can see, when I shift the arrow representing the line of weight, 
like magic. The angle at which the bottle can be tilted before it topples over seem to be increasing. And I think we can still shift this. Hold on, let me just change that. Yep, we can still tilt this some more. So right at the corner of the bottle here, if we tilt this anymore, then it's going to topple. So this would be the maximum angle. And you can see that this angle is so much higher compared to this angle. So this is the maximum angle for the empty water bottle. And this is the maximum angle for the bottle filled with a quarter full of water. Let's take a look at the situations if we were to add different volumes of water. So now this represents a bottle that's half filled with water. So again, this arrow represents a line of weight. And obviously, because we've added water, the center of mass is not here. The center of mass is actually lower, somewhere about the center of the region where the water is, like so. So again, if you want to check what is the maximum angle at which we can tilt this bottle without it toppling, when we rotate this, the center of mass is going to shift again. So I'm going to just move this line of weight so that it goes to the new position of the center of mass. And you find, okay, there's still more space for the bottle to be tilted, right? So we're going to tilt this some more. I'm going to shift this again somewhere about here. And then we're going to shift this again. And this would be approximately the angle. And now that's roughly about the center. So this is the maximum angle at which we can tilt this bottle that is half full of water before it topples over. If we were to compare this angle against the bottle that's a quarter full of water, can you see how the quarter full of water is still at a higher angle compared to half full? And keep in mind that's because the center of mass of the bottle that's a quarter full of water was much lower compared to when the bottle was half full. Now, let's take a look at when the bottle is full of water. And now, because the bottle is full of water, the mass and weight are now uniformly distributed, which means that the center of mass remains at the center of the bottle like this exactly the same as the position of the center of mass when the bottle was empty. So if we were to tilt this bottle, we will get the maximum angle of tilt exactly the same as it was when the bottle was empty. So that's why you find that the tilt of the angle when the bottles are empty as well as full of water to be the same. So here's an overview of the four different situations of the bottle. We have the empty water bottle, a quarter full of water, half full of water, and full of water. Based on the positions of the center of mass and the line of weight, you can see how the empty water bottle and the full water bottle have the same maximum angle of tilt before toppling over. The bottle that's half full has a slightly higher angle of tilt, while the bottle that's a quarter full of water has the highest angle of tilt before the bottle will topple over. Let's compare the theory to practical. So at the bottom here, I have the pictures taken from the practical which I've conducted. And if we compare the angles of tilt in the real life practical against what we've learned in theory, you can see, yeah, they match. So when a bottle is empty and when a bottle is full, the angle of tilts are the same, just like what we've learned in theory. Then when you look at when the bottle is half full, the angle of tilt is higher compared to when the bottles were full and empty, just like what we've learned in theory. Whereas when the bottle was a quarter full of water, the angle of tilt is the highest before toppling over, just like what we've learned in theory. So that's how we determine whether an object is going to topple or not and what the maximum angle of tilt is before toppling over. I hope you found this video to be educational and helpful. Don't forget to click like and subscribe for more physics videos from your physics teacher, Miss Ho. Happy studying!